So I've now got all the main parts out of the box for the Prusa i3 kit. We're about to start on the kit build and I'm going to do that with my youngest daughter. So this should be a really interesting build because it's the first time she's built up a 3D printer. My older daughter built up one last year, so we'll see how that goes. But I just wanted to go through a few of the parts that come in the kit, and just talk about them a little bit to start with, because some of them are quite interesting. So the kit comes with pretty much everything that you're going to need to actually assemble it, including a set of tools, which is really nice, because I think a lot of the time some people are going to be buying these for the first time, and they may not have the tools that we take for granted when we built 3D printers before. So in this little first bag you get a full set of Allen keys, which again, some of them are quite small, you may not have them unless you do a lot of DIY and tinkering. Some spanners and a small screwdriver and also some pliers, you can use them as cutters as well. I think the only thing I would have liked to have seen is a pair of cutters as well as these pliers, but other than that it's fantastic that they've actually included the, the tools that you're going to need to build up this 3D printer. So the first thing that sort of caught my eye was the heated bed. And this comes obviously separately because it needs to be mounted onto the 3D printer. But the thing I wanted just to show you was, it obviously comes as a pre-wired and everything is pre-wired in this kit. So you don't need to solder or to crimp any of the connectors. Everything's gonna be ready for you to just plug in. You need to plug it into the right place, follow the instructions. Um, for the commissioning and assembly, but at least you don't need to solder or crimp anything, which has been a bit of a pain for some kits in the past. So what I wanted to quickly say about this heated bed is it's a bit larger than the ones that you'd normally see, and it's actually classed at MK42, I don't know if that's 4.2 or maybe it probably is. What's really interesting is it's got some studs built onto it, but the thing that caught my eye was that it's actually a a PCB laminate material. Now I actually contacted Joseph just, just to ask him a bit about this bed because I've been working in electronics for 25 years or so and I've used really thick PCB materials in the past but never quite this thick. This is just slightly thicker than I've ever used. I've used them from all sorts of different projects. Uh, the normal thickness of PCB is about 1.2-1.6 millimeters. This is, I'm pretty sure, that is a 3.2 millimeter PCB. Now I've used 2.4 for some quite exotic things and uh, this is quite nice that they've actually gone to the trouble of, of not only using a high temperature FR4 PCB material but also Joseph was telling me when they manufacture these they clamp them up, they actually put them in a press to make them nice and flat uh, and put all the studs and everything in. So this is really good to see that we've got a really solid build platform. It's also much lighter than an aluminium platform so you get the rigidity without the extra weight so it can move a bit faster. So I was very impressed with that. I think the only thing I'm not quite so impressed with is the way that the, the thermistor has been mounted on the back. Now I'm not sure whether it's got any other fixings underneath this pad. It's, it's got some aluminium tape and a bit of Kapton on. And for me that's not quite good enough so I'm going to have to just double check. Maybe I'll peel this off or I'll ask Joseph how this has, a, has actually been mounted. It may well be fixed in some other way under there or soldered on but I'll go and I'll, I'll find out a little bit more about that. If it's just holding the wires in place then it's not so bad if it's been soldered but if it is actually just being stuck down and just as a, pre, as a, a surface fit then I may have to adjust that because I'm not quite happy with that bit. So that's the only bit I noticed that wasn't quite to my liking. So everything else you get the frame that comes and the frame looks really nice. This is a nice black frame on here. We've got all the parts. We've got a full kit of motor parts. So all of our motors are neatly in there. They're all labelled up Prusa Research actually, which I think was really nice that they've gone to the trouble to do that. Um, we've also got some linear, we've got some lead screws actually built into the motors, which is really nice. These are captive, captive lead screws built into the motors. So they're nice and straight and they're also operating pretty fast so that's really nice to see those in a kit. A little bit better than what we normally get when using threaded rods etc. Talking of threaded rods we've also got this little pack which I haven't opened yet so oh that's clever so they've actually packed the spiral wrap that you're going to use you're going to use for um, 
all of your cabling, they've actually put that around the, the smooth bars to keep them protected and safe, which I think is a really clever idea. So someone's been thinking about how to ship these. So we've got a little bit more spiral wrap in there. And we've got plenty of really nice, they look like ground, oh yeah, they're nice ground rods. So these are beautiful rods, better than the normal stuff you get. And these are dark blackened, I don't think they're powder coated, I'm not quite sure, but they're certainly blackened, probably stainless, although they may be carbon, doesn't really matter. There's some nice M10 that go on the side to side and some smaller M8s that go on the front and back. So we've got all our mechanical parts. Then we get a box of other mechanical fixings. So, and all of the bags come with a little reference. And actually it says in the manual that these are one-to-one. -one. So you can use this as an overlay to see which part, if you're unfamiliar with the exact parts that are in the bags inside, you can use that as a little bit of a guide. So that's really nice. We've got other types of fixings. We've got belts, got screws, washers, nuts and everything else and in the bottom we have the hot end which is an e3d hot end it's got the blower and a bit of electronics in there as well which is very nice and our probe sensor for the bed because this has got a nice inductive probe sensor the last bits in the bottom are the rambo and the lcd so the other two bits of electronics that we're going to need so they should be fairly straightforward to, to connect up because we're not having to do any soldering or anything else. It's just going to connect up the, the wires to the correct connectors. In the last box, we have all of the wonderfully printed plastic parts. And this was another thing that was obvious about this kit, that someone's been spending a lot of time reiterating the kit. And that's probably due to the fact that the guys at Perusa Research actually build these up and have a massive print farm and the print farm prints all of these plastic parts so all of the parts that it actually produces on the on the print farm go into the kits to make even more printers so anything that they actually find that goes wrong with the printers over time is going to get slowly weeded out which is I think is a fantastic thing other manufacturers do this as well so this is the so a general principle of rep wrap of self-replicating machines that can produce parts to print other parts. So we have everything in there, even a nice enclosure for the electronics to go into. So that's all ready to go. And the only other thing we have is power supply, which is quite a lightweight power supply. It's actually it worried me slightly. It's, it's more of an LED driver. So it's not a Meanwell supply or anything um, too expensive which is fair enough because this kit is not particularly expensive and if you're going to cut any corners it may be on the power supply not to say this isn't a good power supply this is uh, I've used these types of power supplies on lots of different machines so it's nothing I can see that's wrong with it uh, you're just paying a lot more money for an approved branded power supply so we will see how well this performs so the other thing, obviously it comes with a full printed manual, very nice manual. Uh, it does say, it recommends that you go on the website and find the latest version. So I'm going to be powering up the laptop and downloading all the latest versions of those before I start the process of assembling this machine with my daughter. So that should be really quite fun. I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, as a side point, the kit is um, comes for around 739 euros which is, I think is a pretty good price for the kit. Uh, it's always good to buy a kit if you think you can build it up yourself because to be honest, you're gonna have to service and look after your 3D printer. So buying it in kit form, building it up yourself, it, you're really half the battle because you've already understood how the printer goes together, how all the bearings and movement works, and you're gonna have to look after it as time goes on. That's true with any 3D printer. So if you buy one built up, you're gonna have to learn a little bit about it anyway. So I always recommend people can buy a kit, but the really interesting thing is the new one, fully assembled 3D printer, is only 999 euros fully assembled and tested and shipped to you. And for that extra less than 200 euros, that is a ridiculously good price for a fully assembled printer because it will take you some time to build this kit up. And um, if your time is of value to you and you do need to get printing straight away, then for 999 euros, that's including all the taxes, 
that's pretty amazing. So I'm looking forward to seeing that fully finished assembled version and it will give me something to aim towards for this one. <laughs> okay, so I tracked down young daughter and what do you think about building up your first 3D printer then? It's going to be really fun. It's going to be fun, okay. What do you think about all these parts and the tools? Do you think you're going to be able to do it? Yeah. Yeah, because your sister built one up last year, didn't she? So mm -hmm. you've got to prove that you can do it as well. I think we're going to be able to do it. Yeah. Okay. And you're not doing it just because of the sweets, are you? No, that's good. We don't want to be doing it just because of the sweets. So what sort of things are you going to do with your 3D printer? Well, I'm going to make some things for Halloween and make some stuff for my animal garden. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Loads of creepy bats. Creepy bats. I like creepy bats. And we'll have to make things for Halloween, creepy bats, animal garden things. Anything else? What did we print yesterday on the assembled machine? A dog. A pug, wasn't yeah, it? A pug. That was cool. So cute. We printed a very cool pug. So we'll definitely be doing more things like that. And, hmm, what other things? Hmm, probably, uh... Squishy things? Yeah, squishy. Squishy things. Squishy, squishy things, things are good. Yeah. So we'll do some soft, flexible printing as well, because that was quite fun last year. Okay, well, we might as well get on with the build then. And yep. if you come back next time, you'll see a little bit further how we got on with the build, and we can talk a bit more about how, how you've got on. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, high five. Let's go.